By the time you watch this video, the RTX 4090 is probably already hitting the shelves, with the RTX 4080 following in November. Are you considering putting one of these on your shopping list? If you are and you want to avoid potential disappointment because your system can't accommodate it, then this video is for you. When buying a 40 series graphics card, and in particular the 4090, you'll need to pay attention to power draw, physical size, and power cable requirements. It's all too easy to get caught out. Welcome to the Sim Hanger. My name's Mark. Thanks for watching, and let's get started. We expect three versions of the RTX 4000 series to release prior to Christmas 2022. The 4090 now, the 4080 16 gig in November, and it would be a fair guess that the 4080 12 gig will follow in December. If you've been following the Nvidia launch, you're probably up to speed. But if not, there's one point worth highlighting, and that's with the 4080. The difference between the 16 and the 12 gigabyte versions is much more than VRAM. It has significantly less CUDA cores, noticeably lower power draw, and the performance will be some way behind the 4080 16 gig. And in my personal opinion, to all intents and purposes, you should consider that the 4070. The RTX 3000 series graphics cards will remain available from the RTX 3080 downwards. And the general consensus is that Nvidia and the retailers are still holding substantial stocks of the previous generation graphics card thus the phased introduction of the new generation. Prior to release, there was much speculation regarding the power draw, particularly of the 4090. While specifications have now been released, power draw is not as high as we feared, but it is high and a factor we need to take into account, particularly with regards to the power supply in your PC. We can see here, to power the 4090, you're going to require 450 watts. 320 for the 16 gigabyte 4080 and 285 watts for the 12 gig version. But of course your system is not just running graphics cards and it will vary system to system depending on what CPU, drives, memory and so on that you have. And we can also see that Nvidia have recommended a minimum power supply. For the 4090 for example it should be 850 watts and slightly less for the other cards. But that's not the whole story as these are the specifications for the NVIDIA Founders Editions, running at standard published clock speeds. And I would imagine little headroom for overclocking. So when looking at these figures, you consider them the absolute minimum. And you can be guaranteed that third-party cards from the likes of ASUS and MSI may well have higher power draw recommendations. And in fact, that is the case. Take for example the ASUS Republic of Gamers Strix Gaming card. You can see here they've got a recommendation for a power supply unit of 1000 watts minimum. Today I've been going through a UK based PC site and recommendations on the 4090 varied from 850 up to 1200 watts. So recommendation number one from me is check the power supply unit within your PC. Recommendation number two, check the specifications of the card that you're intending to purchase and make sure you meet their minimum requirements. If your system is underpowered and it will be particularly vulnerable at startup and when under load for a considerable period of time, energy demand of course can spike. If your power supply unit can't meet demand, chances are you'll have a system crash or freeze. These are expensive cards and I would also recommend that you invest in a good quality power supply unit. I would look at gold standard or above. Whilst not a prerequisite, a personal recommendation would be to take the minimum power supply recommended and add 20%. For example, if the minimum was 850, I'd probably buy a 1000 watt. And if you're thinking of changing your power supply, there's another important factor to take into consideration. The introduction of the 4000 series graphics cards from Nvidia and the higher wattage needed to run them, particularly the 4090, have forced a change in the design of the power supply units. Look for a unit that is PCIe 5 compatible or sometimes called ATX 3.0. These new power supplies now have a bespoke connector for the 4090 and 4080. You can see it here on this PCIe compatible power supply. And clearly no expense was spared in coming up with this snappy name. And of course, these PSUs will come with a new cable. This will have all the relevant connectors on and make cable management much easier and simpler for your system. 
with a power rating of a whooping 600 watts. The 4090 is 450 watts. Why 600 then? Well, remember I talked about spikes? That's why. And there's something else new with this power cable. You can see here the data connector, where the power supply will intelligently communicate with the graphics card to regulate power output, something we've not seen with GPUs before. Most manufacturers are still scrambling to make these cables, and in many cases they're not readily available, although there are exceptions. If you buy a PCIe 5 compatible power supply, you will get the cable, Otherwise, general availability in the UK at least seems to be around end of October. To purchase the cable separately, prices vary between £10 and £20. So does that mean if you don't have one of these cables, you can't run a 4090? Fortunately, that's not the case. Third-party GPU providers and NVIDIA themselves are, initially at least, providing a cable that's compatible with existing power supplies. And turning back to the spec sheet, we can see the details listed here. Here it states that three PCIe 8-pin cables are required for both the 4090 and 4080 16 gig, or two 8-pin cables for the RTX 4080 12 gig. So if you do get one of these cards, the cable's likely to look like this. On the one end, we can see the new connector type, and on the other end are three or four connectors that will connect to power cables coming from your power supply unit. When looking at a standard power supply unit, we'll see a number of different connectors. I'm generalizing here, but 6-pin connectors are for your peripheral and SATA interface. 18 and 10-pin are normally connected to your motherboard. And in this case, and it's just an example as power supplies do vary, 8-pin connectors are for your PCI, connectors, graphics cards, and so on. And so here comes check number 3. Make sure you've got sufficient 6 plus 2 PCIe connectors free. And check that you've got enough power cables available, because the adapter cable supplied with a graphics card is not long enough to reach from graphics card to power supply. The end connectors are different anyway. Another recommendation I have, and I understand that space could well be tight in your case, but try and avoid tight bends. At this point here, it can damage the pins on the card. And also, to maintain cable life expectancy, try and avoid plugging in and plugging out numerous times. Let's now turn to the subject of size. In a word, these cards are absolutely massive. My 3090 card was large, occupying two slots. 4090s are longer, wider, and substantially heavier. Take, for example, the Asus Tough Gaming. The width of the card will occupy 3.5 slots and it's almost 350 millimeters long, with a width of almost 72 millimeters. That's about 3 inches to you and I. The MSI Gaming Trio, once again 3.5 slots, slightly shorter but slightly wider. And the ROG Strix Gaming, once again falls very much into the same category. Nearly 360 millimeters long, or nearly 14.5 inches. I don't know, but I'm guessing that the NVIDIA Founders Edition cards are likely to be the smallest. And that brings us round to check number five. Is your PC case big enough to accommodate the card itself? If you're using a mini ATX case, for example, it's likely to be, no, you can't. These are the longest and widest cards we've had so far, with the possible exception of the 3090 Ti. And you'll need to check not only the length, but the width of the card as well, especially if you have anything else in PCIe slots. In my PC, for example, and yes, I know, it needs a good clean, the PCIe slots below the graphics card are empty. My 3090 card occupies two slots. If I was to get a 4090, it would cover three and a half slots. I'm fortunate in a way if I did go for the 4090 because I bought an oversized case with plenty of room. But these are things you'd need to check. As you can imagine, these new graphics cards are going to generate a huge amount of heat. And this brings us round to our sixth and final check. Does your system have adequate cooling? Remember, this card runs at 90 degrees C. Do you have enough fans to exhaust the hot air? Again, in my case, considerations would be how much room do I have around the graphics card itself? I have a 150mm exhaust fan and three 120mm fans at the front to maintain airflow, and the top of the unit is gridded, but open to exhaust hot air. 
Nonetheless, consideration of adding maybe another one or two exhaust fans may be needed. This video is aimed at those people who have decided to go for a 4090 or a 4080 graphics card. So a discussion on price is irrelevant and not covered here. But of course cost is a factor that needs to be borne in mind. Both the purchase price and of course the ongoing running costs. I hope you found this video of some use to you. And as always, thank you very much for watching. Take care, look after yourselves. I'll see you all again very soon. And bye for now.